So for today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to take an ordinary coloring book image such as this and turn it into something spectacular such as this. For this lesson today, you're going to need 9 by 12 white drawing paper, a pencil, permanent marker, a ruler, several paint brushes, and Sargent Art Watercolor Magic. I'll be using the metallic variety, but it does come available in regular colors, fluorescent colors, and glitter varieties. What you want to do to start is create a drawing based off of just regular old co uh, coloring book pages, or even old children's books are a good place to find imagery. So we're looking for some simple characters. Draw them big. I have this big fly here, this big frog down here. We're really just looking to take up the space on the page with some simple images. I drew them first and then I outlined them with a dark marker. The next step is to put a grid on this. So we're going to be using a ruler and we're going to have to do some measurements. So on the, the way. on one side we're going to line up the ruler and we're going to mark every two inches. So I'm going to mark at the two, four, six, eight, and ten. You're going to notice at the bottom that there's one inch left over. It's going to be a smaller space on the bottom that's perfectly fine. Whenever you're measuring, you want to measure both sides first. So I'm measuring down the right side as well, two, four, six, eight, ten. And then connect your lines. This makes sure that you have a parallel straight line. I'm just drawing this right on top of the drawing that I already did. So we're doing all of our horizontal lines first. Then what we're going to do is measure in the opposite direction, every two inches again, so two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, and we're going to connect these as well. So what we're doing is putting a grid of blocks right on top of our initial image. This is going to set us up to explode our image and totally rearrange it, creating our abstract final design. So from here, the next step is to have another piece of paper ready. And we're going to do the same two inch grid on this paper, only draw it a lot lighter. If you have access to a light table or even a window, you could put this paper on top of your initial image and be able to trace through it. My paper is a little bit heavier today, um, so I'm going to show you the longer um, the other technique that I have to do this that does not involve a light table or um, a window. So you could do this at home depending, you know, regardless of what you have. So what I'm going to do here is start with the box on top and I'm going to trace the box. So I'm going to trace my image inside of this box. I'm going to press pretty hard when I'm doing it which will help when I'm transferring. Just get all of your lines. It's going to help since you outlined your image first with a marker, you can see it a lot easier when you're going to trace it. So I'm just outlining my image, and I'm going to sketch the outline of the box too. It's going to help me line it up in my other grid. Okay, so I have that first one here. This is a neat little trick I like to do with tracing paper. You're going to take that image and flip it upside down so that the pencil portion that you drew on is going to be touching your new paper. So you're going to pick a random spot. If you noticed, I'm not in that first spot again. I actually moved it somewhere to the center and I turned it on its side. We're going to take each of those boxes from the original, rotate them, flip them, and move them and put them all over in different spots. I'm going to relocate everything. So now what I'm going to do is trace over the back. Again, I'm pressing pretty hard. What we're doing here, that pressure is pushing your pencil lines onto your new paper. When I take it off, there's my image right inside. It might need a little bit of touch-ups. Sometimes it doesn't come out 100% accurate all the time, but as long as you press hard, you should be fine. So what I'm going to do is go back to my original. I'm going to trace the next box. What you're going to have to do with these smaller pieces, if that happened to you, is trace those separate. I can show you one now. Trace your imagery. And trace the rectangle. 
So this one's a little smaller. I can't put it inside of one of these bigger boxes, so it's going to have to go down in one of the bottom rows, which is fine. Just rearrange them. So you're going to continue until you've gone through every single box here, and you will have something similar to this. So at this point, you can still see my grid lines. We are going to erase them, but what we also want to do is go in inside of here and wherever, let's see, right, I'm going to start here. I'm going to start erasing my grid lines. We want to take some of these lines that just kind of end in the middle of nowhere and we want them to turn into shapes. So we're going to extend them. So this line that just stops right here, I'm going to take it and just extend it that way. And this one I'm going to connect to here. Basically, we're connecting all of these lines so that we're turning them into contained areas, which are called shapes. So as you go, erase your grid and connect your lines. It really doesn't matter where you're connecting them to as long as you're containing the different areas. So you see the idea. I would take my time, I'd go through all of it, make sure all of the grid is 100% gone. And then what I would do is outline my finished drawing in a black permanent marker again. Okay. So you can see some of the parts from my initial image. You can see some of the uh, the detail from the wings of the fly has now turned into a really interesting design that's spread out throughout my drawing. You can see some of where those, those eyeballs were that now kind of moved and migrated, creating their own almost little unique abstract characters. So with this abstract composition, I'm going to use the Sargent Art Watercolor Magic today. And you're just going to go in and you're going to fill in the shapes. I'm starting with this really pretty gold color. It doesn't matter how you want to add the paint. What I would do is start with one color. You know, color one spot in, jump over, color another space in or another shape in. We want to make sure that we're balancing the different colors. So you want to spread them out and use the same colors throughout your composition. It's called balance. So then I'm going to move to this more coppery color and we're gonna space that out too. Remember you're trying to balance your colors, so if you put some of the copper on one side, we wanna put some of the copper on the other side. I'll do this nice big piece. I try to make sure when I'm painting that I'm keeping all my strokes going in pretty much one direction. If you accidentally go over your marker line, it's fine. It'll still, you'll still be able to see it through. You can always go back over it later. Don't be afraid when you're doing this to leave some of the areas black and white, especially if you have a more complicated design such as mine. Um, I like to, when I did mine, I went through with all the different colors and I left some black and white and I actually took my marker and went back in and darken some of these areas, actually color them in black to give it a little bit of contrast. Putting a really dark color next to lighter colors and having that change is going to give you contrast and it's going to make your metallic watercolors pop even more. So don't be afraid to take the black marker and go back in and add some sort of darker details throughout for contrast. It takes a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, but when you're finished, you're going to end up with something amazing like this. This is another variation of the watercolor abstraction lesson done on black construction paper. Instead of using the permanent marker, um, what showed up better on this was using either silver or white Sargent Art products. In the left hand corner I used the silver liquid metals marker uh, which shows up wonderfully on the black as well as the um, metallic watercolor magic. In the right hand corner, we used a white construction paper crayon, which gives a softer effect, not quite as bright, but another, another good choice. The bottom right hand corner, this is a white gel marker from Sargent Art, which does show up very, very well on the black. And in the left hand corner, I used a white construction paper pencil, which also worked well, and the fine tip allowed me to get some nice uh, small details in here. So just another variation of the same project using other Sargent Art products. So this lesson reinforces your drawing skills, your measuring skills. It goes over the elements of line, shape, color, composition, balance, and contrast. 
It also introduces the style of abstract art. It's a little bit of work, but in the end, you'll end up with a really cool one-of-a-kind abstract piece of art. Try this lesson using any of the watercolor magic products.